Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Get on up. It's bobsled time. Cool runnings. All right. That quote was by Sanka in the movie Cool Runnings. In the spirit of the Winter Olympics, I had to quote one of my favorite Winter Olympic movies. In that movie, the Jamaican team had this ritual of saying that quote right before they start their race, so that it helps them get them into their zone. It helps energize and gets the team in sync to focus collectively right before they start the race. Let me ask you: Do you sometimes feel you have a tough time staying focused? Do you have moments in your life where you might feel a little bit scatterbrained, or you have like two dozen different ideas? But when it's time to take action, you freeze, or maybe you're just applying the wrong strategies at the wrong time. How do you stay focused at the task at hand when the clock's ticking and you have a deadline coming up? There's another quote I want to share: Focus on the possibilities for success, not on the potential for failure. This quote was by Napoleon Hill. In today's episode, I'm going to dive deep into the topic of focus and concentration. Are you applying the right light to the situation at hand? Is your camera focusing on the right object? And does your actions match your focus? I'll explain what I mean by the lights, camera, action analogy. I'll also share action steps how you can get into your zone to focus on what it takes to get the job done. Let's cue the intro. Welcome to the Boom Vision Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Ye. This show is about building a solid foundation of your mind, body, and soul. I created this podcast to give you perspectives and frameworks on how to strengthen your mindset and gain clarity in finding your true north. It's time for you to live an extraordinary life with vision that you design. Let's get to work. Hi, folks. Welcome to episode 15 of the Boom Vision podcast. It's exciting to watch the Winter Olympics this week with my family. Which country are you rooting for? It's inspiring to see how some athletes dominate when it's game time. To see their level of focus when they need to perform under pressure. This is why I want to share with you all one of the strategies I use when I coach entrepreneurs. When it deals with the topic of focus, there's a quote I want to share: "Wherever focus goes, energy flows." Tony Robbins says this a lot in his seminars. So the question I have for you is that: Is your attention in or out of focus? Are you applying the right strategy that the present moment needs for you to move forward in achieving your goals? One of the strategies that I share when I coach entrepreneurs. Is what I call lights, camera, action. Okay, so what does that mean? Lights. Light is how I define in this context. It's the thoughts and ideas that are running in your mind. Now, depending on your personality, do you tend to be more methodical and organized in your thoughts, or are you more scatterbrained and you've got hundreds of ideas running across your mind? Do you lean more towards implementing one idea at a time? Or are you a serial entrepreneur that juggles multiple companies and have dozens of ideas that always floats in your mind? So the light here in this context is basically the ideas and thoughts that run through your head. Now, camera or camera lens. What I mean by camera is that in this context, it's the how. How do you focus your thoughts and ideas? When you think of how you process your thoughts and ideas, do you tend to zoom in? And focus on your thoughts and attention to what is right in front of you, or do you tend to zoom out, and your focus is in multiple areas? Now, the combination of your thoughts and focus, or in this analogy, the combination of your lights and your camera lens, equates to three types of light focus. It's what I call the lantern, flashlight, and laser. So, what do I mean by that? A lantern. If you can visualize a lantern. It basically emits light 360 degrees. It's spread all around. It covers a lot of area, but then the intensity of the light is not as strong if you think about how far it can go. Flashlight. 
A flashlight, the way it emits light, is that it's more directional. It's more focused on a particular quadrant. So the light can travel farther. It's not as scattered as a lantern, but it's more towards a quadrant. Now, laser is very specific. It's high energy, it's focused, and it's on exact pinpoint with precision on where it's shining its light. So if you think about the lantern flashlight and laser, that's really the combination of what I mean by light and camera. Your thoughts and ideas coupled with your attention in terms of how you're processing those thoughts and ideas. Do you tend to be more of a lantern, a flashlight, or a laser? Now, last but not least is action. Action is pretty self-explanatory. What actions do you take following your light focus? Are your actions aligned with your light focus? Do you have a laser focus and laser actions? Or do you have a laser focus but a lantern actions? So if you think about different stages, I'll give you an example. When you are in the creation mode, when you're in the brainstorming and innovation mode, those are time where you should be more of a lantern because you're brainstorming. You don't want to dismiss any good or bad ideas. You just want to jot down what comes to you. You want to be able to expand and use your imagination. Those are times when you want to really embody that lantern focus and that lantern thoughts and ideas. Now, a different stage is when, let's say, for example, you've already identified your niche market. When you have a hypothesis that you need to start validating, that's when you want to be more towards a flashlight. Because with a flashlight, you're more directional. You want to be more focused in a certain quadrant. Now, when does it require laser focus? When you have a deadline coming up next week, when you have deliverables that are due in a couple of days, in those times when time's on the clock, that's when you need to be laser focused in order to accomplish your goals. To sum it up, different stages in your business or career warrants different focus and actions to be effective. So I'd like to share a story to give a real life example of what I mean by are you applying the right light focus given the stage of where you are in achieving your goals. I'm part of the SPI Pro community and we run a mastermind group within that community between me and his fellow member, Michael Chuber. And so Michael Chuber has been operating his family business for over 35 years. He runs an insurance company based in you know, New York and Florida area in the East Coast. And he was looking to grow from his brick and mortar business to more of an online presence through YouTube and potentially video podcasting. And so he wanted to roll out a dozen different areas and industries that his company actually covers. And so as he was listing down you know, from home, auto, and over a dozen different areas that he serves currently for his clients, I noticed that he had more of a lantern focus. Now, in the beginning of the brainstorming session, that's exactly what you want because you want to have a sense of the different areas that you want to drive your business towards. And so with the lantern focus, you have a better idea in terms of how vast the map can be. However, the sense I was getting was that his strategy was to record all of these current areas of expertise he has and then roll out these videos in the initial phase. And so it felt like he was applying lantern focus with lantern actions when he was just starting off his channel. And so when Michael asked the group for feedback, that's when I shared with them the lights camera action analogy. And so what I told Michael was that I understand him and his team has a domain knowledge for all of these different industries. But initially in phase one, as you're growing a channel, you want to be seen as an expert for certain keywords, certain industries to start gaining traction. And so what I share with them is that he might want to consider applying flashlight focus and flashlight actions to be able to gain that initial traction. And so the advice I was sharing with him is that first identify from a SEO keyword search, what are the top two to four different areas within the insurance realm that are on top of people's mind in terms of what they're looking for guidance on. 
and to start with there, start with that quadrant. And so the main takeaway I want to share with the story is that when you're about to tackle your goals that you're setting out for, take a step back, zoom out to get a sense of what you feel is required at the present moment for you to reach the next phase. Is it the right strategy to apply a lantern, flashlight, or laser focus? So for this week's action steps, it's basically the Cal method and it's finding your ritual. So let's start with the Cal method first. Using the Cal method, the C-A-L method. C stands for calming. Calm yourself to whatever method you feel that can really help quiet your wind tunnel. Whether it's breath work, whether it's meditation, whether it's going for a jog, whatever it takes for you to get into that meditative state, that calming state, so that your thoughts are not whirling all around. And in that calm state, A, awareness, I want you to ask yourself, what type of focus do I have? If you can imagine the three different light sources, the lantern, the flashlight, and the laser, which light source do you naturally gravitate towards? Be authentic and really feel which one do you typically gravitate towards? And then L, language. Ask yourself, are the actions I'm taking matching my focus? Is it serving me to my highest and best, or do I need to change my actions? What is my intentions on why I desire this goal or this outcome? Because when you ask these questions, you'll get better clarity on, am I being a lantern, am I being a flashlight, or am I being a laser? And to my actions that follow, is that in alignment or is that a mismatch? And so after doing the Cal method, the second step is to find your ritual. Create a ritual that prepares and aligns you for your focus and your actions and what you want to accomplish. Now, why are rituals so powerful? I'd like to share a personal story. Back in high school, I used to play volleyball. And I remember as a senior, when I was in varsity volleyball, before each game, we would have what's called a pre-game warm-up, right? We would jog around the court a couple laps, we would do our stretches, and then we would hit the hitting lines before the game actually starts. And so we always had this routine where we're jogging around as a team, we're stretching as a team. But for me, I had this ritual where I did really the same type of stretches in a very specific order. I would stretch my legs, I would actually sit down, and then I would touch my hands to my to my toes and then make sure that I really ease it in, make sure that my forehead hits my knees to get a really good back stretch before I got up and went to the wall. So I had a very specific set of orders of how I kind of stretched. Now, after we stretch, usually then we warm up our arms and then we start hitting the hitting lines. But what I did, was I would bust out my Sony Discman. Back then, we didn't have smartphones, we didn't have iPods. We had Sony Discmans, right? And I remember busting out my Sony Discman, putting on my headset, and I would play music to get into my zone, right? And back then, my jam was this techno group called Two Unlimited, and there's these two songs that I would always play. It would be the Twilight Zone, and it would be no limit. And so I'd be playing my music, getting all pumped up, raising my energy and vibration to the level that I know this is what it's gonna take for me to play the best game of my life. And so I would find an area on the bleachers, sit down, listen to my music. And as I'm listening to Two Unlimited, and I'm listening to those songs, I would visualize. I would actually visualize a movie trailer of what's going to happen. I would see myself and visualize hitting the ball under the 10-foot line, making a save on a dive on almost an impossible return. I'd be imagining myself playing the game of my life. And as I'm visualizing this movie trailer, I would also immerse myself in the experience where I'm hearing the crowd. I would hear the crowd roaring when we ace the ball when I'm hitting a monster kill 
and I'm just visualizing the scene, hearing the crowd, and then I'm feeling it. As I'm immersing myself in my visualization, I would feel the sensations of what it feels like to hear the crowd, to make the kill, and I'm doing this with my eyes closed. Now, the thing is, is that I did not get up from my spot until I felt it. What do I mean by it? There's a sensation when I feel that what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling is integrated into my body. I mean, if you really think about it, right? It's imagination, it's a voice, intuition. I didn't realize this, but I did this early on, even when I was in high school, because this was my ritual. I would see it, I would hear it, and I'd feel it. And I didn't get up until I felt it. It was, it was that feeling where I knew this is going to happen. This is going to happen. So when I finally feel it, when I feel it integrating in my body, that's when I would just clap my hands and say, let's do this. And that's when my eyes would open. Now, how effective was this when I had this consistent ritual before we started a game? To put it into context, I want to share a definition. A peg, how our team defined it, was that when you're spiking a ball, when you're hitting the ball and going for the kill, when you actually hit someone from the chest up, so it either hits their chest, shoulders, neck, or head, when you actually hit them, the opponent, without having enough time for them to react, to block it or to pass it, but actually hits their shoulder, neck, or head, that would be considered a peg. And so early in the season, my team and I actually had this competition where, hey, let's see who can actually get the most peg by the end of the season. And guess what? I actually had the most. I got my 10th peg on the quarterfinal of the CIF game. And it was just insane because the ritual I did helped me become very focused in what I want to embody, the energy I want to embody, the energy I want to feel. And it just released this fierce and lion within me. And it got the results. I hope by sharing my personal story, you can see just how powerful it is when you can create your own ritual that helps you raise your energy and vibration to feel it. To create your own ritual, i like you to follow these four steps. Now, the first step is getting into a calm state. In my volleyball example, my pre-game warm-up was my way of getting into a calm state. So for you, this can be meditation, it could be jogging, it could be as simple as a one minute breath work and just breathing in and breathing out. The second step is setting your intentions. I want you to say, my intention for achieving X is Y because it makes me feel Z. My intention for creating X is Y, because it makes me feel Z. Let me give you an example. My intentions for growing my Boom Vision audience is to empower people that want to align their purpose and create abundant success on rock-solid foundation of their mind, body, and soul. This makes my soul feel so alive and fulfilled. So set your intentions in what your heart truly desires and what it wants to create. Because by saying that, you'll get clarity in what you really want to feel when you achieve it. And I want you to feel it. I want you to feel it when you feel it. Okay? And the third thing in your ritual is I want you to listen to a song that gets you into that zone is the energy you you need that requires you to accomplish that goal. Is it high energy? Is it focused energy? Is it soothing energy? Whatever energy it is, find a song that matches that vibration and listen to it. Be in that zone. And as you're listening to that song to get you into that zone, 
The fourth step in the ritual is declaring out loud, I am powerful. I am fierce. I am unstoppable. I am worthy. Whatever words that you feel that feels right, that helps you to lock it in, whether it's powerful, whether it's fierce, whether it's unstoppable, whether it's worthy, I want you to declare out loud, I am. Do you remember in episode two, in an inner voice, I went over what I-A-M stands for. I-A-M. I stands for intentions, A stands for actions, M stands for manifestation. When you have the right intentions and you back it up with the right actions, you manifest what you want. I-A-M. I am. That's why this declaration is so powerful. So I want you to pick the word that resonate with you. And when you do it, Tell yourself, I got this. So final thoughts for today's episode. I want to share a quote. Action without vision is only passing time. Vision without action is merely daydreaming. But vision with action can change the world. This quote was by Nelson Mandela. Folks, I really want you to create a ritual that you can use either in the mornings or before you start work. If you're looking to be able to focus more effectively at the task at hand, you're going to be surprised on how powerful it is when you can frame your mindset, your light, your focus in alignment with what you can visualize, hear, and feel. Your ritual will only be effective when you feel it. What do I mean by it? When you feel that integration of what it is that you truly want to embody. You got to be able to see it. You got to be able to hear it. You got to be able to feel it. I'd love to hear what ritual you created that works for you. Send me a DM on Instagram. My handle's at Benjamin Ye. Reach out and let me know if these action steps work for you. And if you need help finding a song that you can resonate with to help you with your ritual, head over to my website, www.benjaminye.com. I've created three curated playlists of songs that vibrate with either high energy, confidence, or healing energy. As an extra bonus, in addition to the free music playlist, I've also added a link to a free one-minute breath work exercise that you can download on your phone. I created this one minute breathing exercise as my gift to you. You can incorporate this as the first step of your ritual to get into a calm state. The key is to keep your ritual simple so that you can build that as a daily habit. If you feel you've gained any value from today's episode, I would really appreciate it if you share this with your family, your friends, or your team that can truly benefit. Leave a comment or review. Let me know if what I shared today resonates with you. Until next time, folks, be kind to yourself, be in the light, be you. Thank you so much for tuning in to my Boom Vision podcast. If you'd like to find out more about me in this podcast, head over to BenjaminYeh.com. That's spelled B-E-N-J-A-M-I-N-Y-E-H.com. If you haven't already, click subscribe and I'll catch you next time.